Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Isaac, and today we are taking a look at Wear OS. So before we start, I need to say a couple of things about the channel, and then we can move on from there. Two videos ago, at least from this video going backwards to, um, I didn't have my editor. It wasn't working for some reason, but now it is. So my editor is back. I also decreased the frame rate from 60 to 30 so that I can edit faster and I could edit better with less lag, export faster and upload faster. So it's actually going to be better quality for decreased quality. Also, this is going to be the most difficult and it's going to be a very long video. So just letting you guys know, this is the hardest video I've ever made. So let's begin. Um, it was called Android Wear, so if you see something called Android Wear, that was the older version of what is known as Wear OS. It was rebranded because it kind of stuck in consumers' minds that if it's called Android Wear, it works with Android phones. Just like the Apple Watch works with Apple phones. But that is not the case. It works with both Android and iOS, although with iOS you do have some issues which I will get into. But for now, just keep that in mind that it works with both. So if you're watching this, kind of interested to see what life is like on the other side of the fence, just letting you know you can be on that other side of the fence without having to leave Apple's ecosystem. So I'm gonna start with Google Assistant. Google Assistant is the full Google Assistant that you would have on say a phone or that you'd have on the Google Home or Google Home Mini, Google Home Max, whatever. It is the full Google Assistant. You get all the features like calling, text, I will get into that later, reminders, um, asking questions, things like that. However, there is a confusing part about it. At least for, for some people, it's gonna be kind of confusing, so I'm gonna try to explain it as well as I can. So it has to have a connection to Wi-Fi somehow. Every single like assistant requires a connection to Wi-Fi, or at least, cellular or something like that. But there's three different connection methods for um, Google Assistant on the watch. The first is LTE. So you may have service on the watch. It depends on what watch you have and whether you have it set up or not and linked to your service provider. But most people usually wouldn't have it. But that is one way. You can just use the straight up data off the watch to ask Google questions, do things with the Google Assistant and that's one of the ways you can connect to the internet through there. The other is through the on, like built-in Wi-Fi in the watch. So my watch does not have LTE, so I use either the built-in Wi-Fi uh, or I use the Bluetooth, which I'll get into Bluetooth in a second, but Wi-Fi is pretty much straightforward. If you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, then you, which it would be connected to your phone, so it scans for the passwords you have on your phone already, but if you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, it pretty much goes straight to the Wi-Fi. So there's no issues there. However, the weird part is with Bluetooth. So if you have Wi-Fi off on the watch, LTE off on the watch, if you're just connected to Bluetooth to your phone, which is what I usually do, um, you have to have an internet connection on the watch. Basically, the watch transmits everything that it hears to the phone, and the phone transmits that to the internet, where the internet transmits it back to the phone and then to the watch. Once again, kind of confusing, but the whole point of it is the phone needs to have some type of connection in order for Google Assistant to work if you are on Bluetooth. All right, so we've been talking about connections for a while. Let's move on to a part of connections with iOS. So you have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and iOS, but you cannot answer texts or answer calls I don't know if you can, I don't think you can instigate calls either, but I, you might be able to start calls through the Google Assistant or whatever on your watch. Now, the problem with that is just because of iMessage and the Apple's phone app that it uses, it's just not, I don't know, I guess equipped for that. And it'll work fine on the Apple Watch, but it will not work on Android Wear. I mean Wear OS. It's kind of weird that you can't do some of those things, but you are going to get a lot of the, if not all of the rest of the features, so don't worry about it. I would also suggest that you use Google's um, own applications, like Google Calendar or something like that, and the, I don't know, I would suggest that you do these things, 
but with iOS, the connection is really weird just because of how walled off Apple can be at times. So using the watch connected to your phone can be a little weird. You really have to try it out for yourself and research online what will work and what won't work. I don't want to go into too many details just because there's a lot of things you can do on the watch that I don't know if it will work with Apple or not, but keep that in mind. But with Android, there's going to be no problems, so for the most part, everything that I say is going to, I guess, follow in the footsteps of Android. Okay, so calling and texting is pretty standard. If a call is incoming, you can see it, you can answer, you can hang up. And this is, of course, on Android, where not on iOS. The problem is, if your watch is like mine and does not have built-in speakers, you can answer a call or start a call through there, but it'll give you a little icon or notification that will say to continue the call on your phone. So you start a call or enter a call on your watch, you have to, it'll, it'll go through the phone. So you can just hit speakerphone or you can pick it up with your ear. Um, that's kind of straightforward actually. But if you have built-in speakers, you just dip through there, do your call, not a big deal. Texting is a little different. If you have the Android Messages app, which I suggest you get on both your watch and your Android phone, because it's probably the best text messaging app on all of the Play Store, and it's the one that's gonna work with the watch. But anyways, you have a couple different reply options, or texting options. You have the quick reply, which is things like okay, or see you later, things like that that Google will automatically recommend, or the watch will automatically recommend. It depends on what they're saying. So if someone says I'll be there by six, maybe it'll be like okay, see you later, or just okay, or sure, or something like that. The other way is through voice. Now you could just use your voice and text someone like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow, or what do you think about the Red Sox game? Something like that. You can pretty much just text straight up through the watch with the physical keyboard. I mean, not physical keyboard, but there is a keyboard if you want to use it. So if you're texting something that you know that the voice won't recognize what it is, then you could just type it quick in the keyboard as well, add it to it, and that's not too hard. You can select or draw emojis which is kind of weird, but if you want to just throw in a smiley face, you just do smiley face, and it'll do its own thing. You can just go through, select the emoji you want if it's on the list, try it again if it's not, and you should be fine. I wouldn't try to use it for more advanced emojis like a car or a train or something like that, but you never know, it could work, it could not. I personally don't use it all the time, I use it if I want something like heart or smiley face, something like that. And you can also, once again, I don't know if I said this or not, you can use the Google Assistant through the watch to send a text or even to reply, but I guess that'd kind of be sending a text as well. So that should be all for those two sections for connectivity and for calling and texting. Two really important things, and we got Google Assistant out of the way too. Let's start on kind of applications. So I say kind of because a lot of these applications require a counterpart on the phone. So if you download something for watch faces, you generally have to get an app as well on the phone, which isn't a big deal. Getting to apps is easy. You just press the crown and it'll bring you to your app list. You use that crown to scroll up and down or use your finger to swipe up and down on the screen to get to your, all your applications, select the one you want, things like that. Apps on the watch generally don't take up a lot of space, and I'd recommend you don't download any really big apps either, just because a lot of watches come with like four gigabytes of onboard storage or something like that. Not a lot to work with. Now, if you're on an application, pressing the crown on the right side or wherever it is on your watch will bring you straight back to the home. Now, I don't know if there are any watches without a crown, but if there are, it's, they're going to be other weights. So if you go to the top of your screen, if you swipe down from there, you'll get your control center, which will have things like airplane mode, do not disturb settings, whatever. Things like that. If you swipe up from the bottom, you get your notifications. And if you swipe to the right, you can get to your watch faces, as well as swiping to the left. I neglected to say this, and I'm sorry I neglected to do so, but I apparently, I don't know why I didn't say it, but there are more features such as GPS, NFC, heart rate monitors, things that really vary per watch. Some watches may have GPS but not NFC, or NFC and not GPS. They may not have LTE, they may have LTE. There are tons of different features that are on certain watches that really kind of vary. So there are tons of different watches out there that you really need to kind of pick through and see which one you like the most. 
So that's literally everything about the OS. It's a very nice OS. I think that it does its job really well. I wish there were some more customization options available and maybe some button remapping, but it is very good. It's pretty much what you'd expect from Google. Even if you are a Apple user and you don't like Google very much, they do make a good OS and this one is no different. There has to be negatives. I'm not gonna leave out any negatives. I'm not that type of reviewer. We need to take a look at what's bad about it. The first thing is battery life. Some watches have great enough battery life and most people are okay with charging their watch at night. However, the Wear OS isn't super good with battery life. It will kind of crush some with like watch idle or something or the Wear OS itself will kind of crush some as well as with the screen. Now another big problem they have to fix or they should like try to work around is iOS. Now a lot of these problems that Google have with their own operating system on Wear OS is not their whole own fault and the same goes true to this. iOS is not very good with Wear OS. I mean the two interact fine until you try to do things like texts or calls or try to use any of the iOS services, you're not going to be able to do that. Those are some hurdles that Google really needs to leap in order to, I guess, kind of capitalize on a new market. So there are problems, and I'm not denying that. But I'm saying that Wear OS is a great platform with a ton of great features that really does have a future if applied right by Google. All right, so this is the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more thoughts on Wear OS, let me know in the comments below. But before we end, I have to include something for the LG Watch style. So if you're not interested, just click away, that's fine. But let me just say this real quick. With the OS and the hardware of the LG Watch style, it makes for a really good watch. I don't like to, you know, come home from school and be like, I have to charge it, like, again. And then having to, you know, take it off and put it on the pad charge it and let it sit there where it could be tracking my steps or it could be receiving notifications now I'm back it's, it's like I don't even have to watch it and that's probably the biggest problem with that watch it's just its battery life it's really hard to get by but if you can charge it and if you're not going to use it super heavily I suggest you get this watch it is a beautiful watch a great device but it's just not going to meet the expectations when it comes to battery life Okay, so that's going to be it guys, thank you so much for watching, um, definitely watch part 1 if you're interested, and I'll see you guys in the next one.